Headline news most affecting Chilliwack this week. An outspoken politician who was never elected to local council, Dick Harrington has passed away. Chilliwack pride banners are going to be gracing the downtown this summer. One of Chill TV's own staff was involved in a river rescue and the Chilliwack Chiefs starting round two of the BC Hockey League playoffs this Easter long weekend. Josh Ford will have more on sports later in the show. Our special guests this week include former local MLA Gwen O'Mahony as well as Terry Westerby and Justin Mallard talking about those new pride banners. All right, Chilliwack, let's get started. Oh, and by the way, we also have uh, Paula DeWitt with a, another segment of the new Chill TV program, Seen Here First. Now, our top story. City of Chilliwack is supporting and funding Pride banners in downtown Chilliwack for the month of June. Now, these banners are in alignment with the action plan goal from the Mayor's Task Force on Inclusiveness, Diversity and Accessibility. Chilliwack Pride President Terry Westerby and the banner creator Justin Mallard will be joining Chill TV on this project with an interview that's coming up later in the show. He was a political force of nature. Dick Harrington was a politician who tried but was never elected to local office, but he did help many others, including his wife, become elected. Dick Harrington was also heavily involved with the then Chilliwack, now Valley Huskers. Last week after, or pardon me, last week after his cancer diagnosis in 2021, uh, we found out that he had gone to hospice. But Dick Harrington passed away this past Monday at the age of 77. One person whose career was influenced was former Chilliwack Hope MLA Gwen O'Mahony. And Chill TV spoke with her about Harrington. And we have that interview right now. Gwen O'Mahony, uh, it's with a heavy heart that uh, we're, we're talking about uh, the passing uh, of Dick Harrington. Now, when you ran uh, as MLA for the, the old provincial riding of Chilliwack Hope, Dick was your campaign manager, what, for one election, or one provincial, one federal? Yeah, Dick, Dick was a, uh, actually very inst instrumental in my decision to run the first time I ran, which was in 2009, provincially. Um, I, I was one of the people that had seen the devastations of the budget cuts that the uh, BC Liberals brought in under Gordon Campbell as Premier. And it made me so upset and so angry. And I wanted to get involved and do something. And at the time, I had two girls um, that were living with me, my nieces who had come into my care and I was living in Chilliwack and I approached the NDP, the local NDP writing association and said, what can I do? And uh, they said, well, what do you, what do you think about running as a candidate? So I mulled that around in my head and uh, it's a big commitment, obviously. And it came down to one deciding factor for me. And that was a campaign manager. Now my background, my family, my friends, none of us in my circle um, had real campaign experience. And so uh, that was sort of, that was it for me. I remember talking to my mother and I said, well, if, if there's a campaign manager that would just suddenly mysteriously appear, then I'm going to do it. And uh, two days later, I got a call from Dick Harrington, who had uh, incidentally moved to Hope and was ready to get going. And uh, so Dick, Dick was also, was my yeah, campaign and manager. Dick, yeah, and Dick was also instrumental with his wife uh, back in Ontario politics as well. Uh, I, uh, we, we've seen the picture of him with a broom when he uh, <laughs> threatened to sweep through Chilliwack uh, Council and such. Uh, we, I understand uh, there will be a celebration of life, but that's going to take some time, I guess, what, the summertime? Is that what we're looking at? Um, I haven't heard anything uh, from the daughter yet. Uh, there have been some posts to Facebook about some ideas of how the celebration of life might look. Uh, would there be an NDP themed uh, event or uh, sports themed? Because Dick had uh, a lot of interests, you know, anything competitive, Dick would, would be involved in it. <laughs> it was coaching a team or giving advice yeah. or, you know, being a, a campaign manager. So they're still mulling that over. And there's, as you can see, Dawn, you've seen on my Facebook page and other posts, uh, people are really interested in, in how we can truly honor him in a, in a really great way. The other and, issue, and, of course, is, sorry. Yeah, and I, I um, hate, hate, to, hate to cut you off there because uh, yeah. to, we, we're running for time, but uh, is this still just floors us that Dick is gone at the age of 77. Uh, but uh, if someone wants to get more information on, on Dick and reaching out to the family, uh, what, get through to you on your Facebook page? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I have been, uh, people have been private messaging me 
And I will definitely uh, put a post out when they decide on when the memorial will be held. And certainly um, there'll be an email sent out to the NDP uh, members as well. So we'll be uh, announcing it via social media and through emails that way. And next time you uh, have a chat with the family, uh, we heard back from the Valley Huskers and they send their love to the family. Gwen, again, a big thank you for joining us. Thank you, Don. And you're watching Chill TV's News of the Week. It's not every day when you are involved in a rescue, but that's exactly what happened to one of Chill TV's contributors. John Barson was out and about for the day along the Chilliwack River at Wilson Road when he saw a couple in the water. Their raft crashed into a stump. They were holding on for dear life. We'll have John's story coming up a little later on in the news. UFE is holding a transition fair for students with disabilities. It's coming up next Wednesday, April the 20th. Over 20 community partners will be coming together to explain the programs and the supports that they have to offer. Chilliwack Kent MLA Kelly Patton will be the MC. Chilliwack Mayor Ken Popoff and Chief Eddie Gardner will be dignitaries. And all the information can be found on the UFE website. Both Fraser Valley locations of the Bookman have come up with over $6,000 for the Canadian Ukraine Foundation. Clients could personalize a front window square for a Ukraine flag at both branches of the bookstores, and that was with every $2 donation. Now, those funds were donated to a registered charity, the Canada Ukraine Foundation. Chill TV was invited to the recent Kindness Chain Dinner, which was a thank you to some 100 volunteers who have given back to the community. This was done through picnics, barbecues for seniors, street cleanups, and providing groceries for seniors and low-income families that are in need. Kindness Chain has a Facebook page if you want more information on what they do. After the break, a short clip from Paula DeWitt's new program, Seen Here First, and uh, that's with an interview with Clint Hames, the director of Calendar Girls. Watch the full episode this weekend on Chill TV. So tell us a little bit, what has the Chilliwack Players Guild been doing for the last two years and what are you doing now? Well, th this has been a great time for the Guild to work on the space that, uh, that we have, we call the Guild Hall. Um, so we've had small groups of people throughout the pandemic working on uh, bringing it back up to um, the standards we need. Uh, we've uh, created a new props area, which we've closed in and made some improvements in our costume storage and in the area that we rehearse. Uh, in. Come on out and see the show. Right. It's the humor is great themes, great. some wonderful humor in the show and, and the kind of show where everybody can just sit back and kind of go, Oh, what a nice story that is. So a lot of the uh, usual characters, are they coming, did they come back and audition again? Well, we didn't re-audition. We kept the same cast kept stayed together, except for a couple of, uh, a couple of roles where we had to uh, recast a, a funny story. One of our characters, um, as we're just going into kind of the last couple of weeks, she came to me and said, oh, Clint, I'm, I'm pregnant. Oh. And, I, and I said, oh, you, you, what does that mean? And she said, well, I'll be able to do the show, but... I'm feeling very sick, so she was saying I, I may have to carry a bucket around rehearsals. <laughs> Set fire to the top, toast the seeds, turns your malt into a liquid lava. Oh, I had one of these last Christmas. My Eddie did some. Uh, set fire to the death, maybe. Oh, uh, in light of which, perhaps we better attempt. We can do a big musical like Fiddler on the Roof, I think, was the last really big musical that we did in that space. And we can do really well because everybody loves to go yeah. and see a musical. No and you can, house, you know, sure. we yeah. try to do plays that will challenge the actors as well. But the more you're challenging actors with a piece, you're challenging audience to come and see it. Yeah. And sometimes you don't get the, the level of audience. It's the right you formula. Want. The concrete was pouring in a continuous 12-hour project on Monday, creating the base floor for the Paramount project. That'll be the new seniors housing complex and the new headquarters for Chilliwack Community Services. The expected opening is the fall of 2024. The Chilliwack citywide garage sale is set for May the 7th, a, a unique opportunity for residents to promote the reuse of materials. Hey, one person's trash is another person's treasure. If you want to be listed for this sale, just go to the City of Chilliwack website for all the details. It's back and better than ever. Kick off the summer of 2022 with an all-day celebration of Cultus Lake Day. That's Saturday, June 25th at Main Beach. There will be the return of the Artisan Market and a ton of food trucks. And yes, the water slide will be open by then. 
Peter's East, or PD's Easter egg extravaganza is back this Easter long weekend. In fact, it opened today. All the information is on their social media. And once again, it's an outdoor event at Fantasy Farms on Gibson Road. Live events are quickly returning to Chilliwack. Comedian Derek Edwards at the Cultural Center with his show in praise of the ostrich. And that is Thursday, April the 21st. And the show, a lot of people are, are flabbergasted to find out about. Yeah, Jan Arden, the Cross Canada Tour is coming to Chilliwack June the 24th. Tickets for both shows are now available through the Cultural Center box office. Next up, our interviews with the creators of the new Chilliwack banner as well, John Barson. And that's followed by Josh with sports. Chill TV's News of the Week, and we are joined by Terry Westerby of uh, Chilliwack Pride and uh, Justin Mallard, who is a designer and worked with Terry on a project that we've just found out about over the last few days of Pride banners. And this is, everybody is, is, is this is the talk of Chilliwack, and it's a positive thing. I haven't heard one bad word about it. Uh, tell us about this project. Uh, either one of you can start. Whose idea was this? Did the city come to you and say, can you design something for us? Or was it the other way around and you, you gave a proposal? Yeah, so um, first off, thanks for having us. Oh, we really welcome. appreciate it. Um, so basically, what uh, I, I was on NTPDA uh, with the city of Chilliwack, so the Mayor's Task Force for Inclusion, Diversity, and Accessibility. Uh, for the last two years, so I had an opportunity to be able to share feedback uh, for the LGBTQ plus community as I, I am within it. Um, and... Uh, you know, I brought up different ideas and initiatives for visual inclusivity and um, really push hard for it through, uh, through the task force. Um, and this last summer, we just recently moved off a promontory down into Sardis. And uh, my son and I, we do runs every single Sunday. We're going through um, River's Edge community. Um, and there's this family or this, this home uh, that flies a different flag in front of their house um, every single month. And it's, it's really inspiring and it's mm -hmm. great and it's thought provoking. Um, so one of the flags they had flying was a Black Lives Matter flag that was uh, flying in front of their home. And my son, who was seven at the time, says, you know, Daddy, what is that? Um, and it, uh, it gave me the opportunity to have some more dialogue. Like we are obviously a very inclusive family and, and uh, making sure that we have these conversations are really important. Um, but what this did was it allowed more dialogue uh, between myself and my son and allowing him to be able to have a better understanding and for him to be a better advocate and ally in his own world. Um, and it just caught me thinking even more about, you know, the, the struggles that the LGBTQ plus community has had within our community as well, and how visual inclusion uh, could yeah. spark that same conversation. So uh, this is where this all came from. Now the banners themselves, uh, it, uh, from the city's media release, they're saying that uh, everybody seemed to be involved in this, including the BIA. Uh, so what was the genesis? Did you guys reach out first or was this, I mean, let's have coffee and start talking or? Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, so basically. You're gonna let him do it. <laughs> um, so basically um, through this process, uh, I wanted to make sure that it was really representative of the community as a whole. Um, and I wanted to make sure that I connected with all the right people that uh, shared the same vision, the same passion and would execute the same way. Um, so I did connect with uh, the Chilliwack BIA, Chilliwack Chamber of Commerce, Tourism Chilliwack. I connected with Terry as well. Uh, and then I connected with Bonnie Graham, uh, who was the Indigenous designer uh, for the artwork uh, on the Indigenous uh, inclusion flag there. Um, and then also consulted with um, Chief App as well. Okay. And now we're looking at June. Uh, will they be, would these banners be able to stay up until uh, we have the Pride uh, festival itself, the Pride Day, I guess August, are we still shooting for August 20th-ish? Yep. So. <clears throat> August 21st Sorry. is the tentative date, and we're just working with the city right now to get that launched and uh, get everything underway, but if uh, you want to volunteer, come to chillawakpride.com, uh, we definitely need some help. Um, but the goal is to have them up to the end of August, but we're, I think we're right now just looking at Pride Month, Okay. Uh, but it's a growing program, and I think we're going to see it all over Chilliwack in the next couple of years. Oh, that would be cool. Now, uh, again, if somebody wants to get a hold of you, are you doing virtual meetings or are you doing face-to-face -face meetings uh, as, you're, as you're leading up to the event in August? Yeah, we're doing both. We're, we're trying to make sure it's as inclusive as possible, uh, doing online meetings and in-person meetings, and also just to really get together and uh, feel that sense of community again. So ChilliwackPride.com or... You betcha. And on Facebook as well? ChilliwackPride.com. Terry, Justin, big thank you for coming you. in, and we will have more of these conversations as we go along. Yes, absolutely. Thanks for having us. Thanks You're welcome. Us.
Shell TV's News of the Week, and uh, normally you see John Barson behind the scenes, or you won't see him because he's one of our technical producers, but uh, John, you were involved in a river rescue on Tuesday. What happened? Where about did this happen? Well, first of all, the weird thing is I never leave the studio early. Yeah. And for some reason, I thought, well, I'm going to go back to the river, and, and I left early. Yeah. And uh, I pulled in um, just before 3. Uh, I was t taking my my e-bike out of the back of my van to go for a ride and I heard yep like distress like people and this was distress. the Chilliwack River by what Watson Road I think uh, uh, Wilson Road Wilson Road okay yeah just down from the store and uh, I, I looked down the trail and I can't see anybody and I thought well maybe there's one of the guys fishing because there's always guys fishing out there yeah always and uh, I couldn't see anybody I looked up and down river and then right in front of me literally one of the long fallen trees that came down during the flood right. last fall um, I see a hand come up and I'm like, what the heck? And then I see uh, somebody behind and there's a woman hanging on to the stump for dear life. And you could see something floating and it looked like a, a destroyed raft or something. Yeah. And the guy was trying to rest, like get, get her and, and, uh, and she's hanging on and she lets go. And we both start yelling, stand up, stand up, because the log, that long tree, the, it, the water's not that deep right where that tree is lying in the yeah. riverbed there. But the current's so strong. Yeah. And uh, she must have been freezing and cold and exhausted, and she couldn't hang on, and she let go. And I, meanwhile, I, I have my phone, and I'm, I'm calling 911. Um, oh, and 911, they send me to the Coast Guard <laughs> on the first call. So I call back, get the RCMP. They say, we'll, we'll get there and uh, keep your phone handy. And I grabbed my bike and I headed downstream, grabbed two coats, threw on two extra coats and uh, raced downstream down the trail. And you can't see the river from the trail. So you have to cut in and yeah. go further, cut in. I went about 500 yards, went, nope, they've, they've gotta be out sooner. So and I was hoping they both came to shore on my side of the river. And as I'm coming back and I go to one of my outlook spots, I look and I could see activity just around the, the corner on this big bar right. by, on the river there, by, just down from the cabin. And uh, I can actually see two RCMP officers there already. So I race up to that spot and uh, they, they, they had them and they were covering them. And what had happened was uh, Arthur, uh, Arthur Olesiak, he's a regular, he's a Chilliwack resident. Uh, he fishes down there like yeah. a lot of guys do. And he just happened to be there in his hip waders and he saw the woman coming down the river and he raced out into the water, grabbed her and pulled her ashore and looked up. And then you could see that the man had been swept onto the other shore. Right. And luckily he had his own little four man raft. So he dragged that up the river and crossed. Now um, you, were, you were able to get some video of this. I actually, well, I didn't get video of it because at the time, um, I, I don't know, I just had that thing about, you know, taking pictures. Well, yeah, of, you're focused. Uh, yeah. I'm focused on what's going on. But uh, yes, I actually, uh, took some video of the tree and the log. You can see that here in a sec. Um, you can see what's left of the boat because Chilliwack Search and Rescue actually came uh, as well. There was Search and Rescue. There was, I think, there was an air ambulance. There, the, the, the police. They were they responded so quickly. I yeah. couldn't believe it. Um, and uh, Search and Rescue, although they rescue people, they went out and they rescued their belongings and everything that was still trapped yeah. on the log. So that this video shows you the strength of the river at the point where they collided with the tree stump and it punctured their raft, yeah. dragged their raft under, partially under the tree. And uh, that's when it all happened. Let's take a look at that video, it's amazing. This is the spot where they got trapped. You can see the remains of their raft wedged underneath the root of that tree. They were both hanging on there yesterday when I pulled in. Uh, she was hanging on to the back of the roots um, I mean, it was terrible, but she, we were yelling at her to try and stand up, and she let go, and she just had no more energy, tired, and was dragged down river. The man realized that. He let go and went after her to save her. So uh, as they were drifting down the river here, he actually got caught in the current and got taken to the south shore to the other side. And luckily for her, Arthur was fishing just across, just across there, just around the corner. And on this shore, he rescued her. He had hip waders on. He went into the river, pulled her in. Uh, he had a little raft, so he took it up river and cross caught the man and brought him back to safety. So dangerous situation on the Chilliwack River, but a happy ending. And as you can tell from that video, uh, how fast the freshet is building and it still will continue to build for 
about the next month or so. Uh, so everybody's okay, but uh, you, were, you were saying off camera that uh, the woman was pregnant or is pregnant. Yeah, she's pregnant, and it, it could have been a, a, an even worse ending um, had Arthur not been there. So uh, just happy that uh, everybody is safe and. And, uh, and, and again, kudos to the police and the search and rescue and everybody for getting out there so quickly. Yeah. John Barson, Chill TV. And thanks again. <laughs> that was traumatic, I can tell. You're watching Chill TV's News of the Week. Welcome back to sports, everyone. It's Josh here with you once again. Thanks for tuning in, as always. We got another big show for you. It feels like we've got all big shows in sports these days, which I suppose is a good problem to have. Uh, so let's just jump right into it. Beginning with last Sunday. The Chilliwack Chiefs had to go to seven games to dispose of the Coquitlam Express to win their best of seven first round series four to three. This week, they'll begin their second round matchup against the Nanaimo Clippers with games one and two this Friday and Saturday night in Chilliwack. So check out some playoff hockey happening right here in Chilliwack. Check out the Chiefs social media. They got all the details there for you. Chilliwack Olympian Jordan Heidema had one assist as the Canadian women's national soccer team beat Nigeria 2-0 in an international friendly at BC Place this past weekend. This was followed by a two-all draw. It was a lot tougher night uh, for the women's team on Monday in Langford, which is just outside Victoria. The matches were all part of a celebration tour for the women's national team to celebrate their gold medal triumph, triumph at the Tokyo Games last summer. So Jordan will now return to France to rejoin her club team, PSG, as they prepare to face Lyon in the semifinals of the UEFA Champions League on April the 24th. The UFE Cascades Athletic Awards were announced last week. Chilliwack's Deanna Tuxurer took home the highest honor of the night, being named Athlete of the Year, alongside Coquitlam's Trevor Zanata on the men's side. Deanna and her sister Julia, who for her part was named Rookie of the Year, led the UFE women's basketball team to the top spot in the West Division 15-2 record this past year. So I'm sure their parents are both extremely proud, especially considering their dad, Al, has been the women's basketball coach at UFE since 2002. He gets to coach his kids. What a great life. They're both great players. Dad must be absolutely stoked, living his best life. All right. In the last race weekend of the season, the Canadian National Ski Cross Champions were crowned on home soil at Nakiska, just outside of Calgary. Olympic silver medalist Marielle Thompson took home the top honor for the women, while back-to-back -back Red Bull Super Ski Cross champ Reese Howden of Cultus Lake captured the title for the men. This culminates a tremendous return to form for Reese over the last few months as he won the penultimate race of the World Cup season back in Austria a couple weeks ago and the aforementioned Red Bull event in Switzerland in late March. So he'll be really looking to carry this momentum forward into the rest of 2022 and the World Cup season uh, beginning again in the fall. Huge, huge end of the season for Reese. Congrats, man. Chilliwack Giants Spring Camp is coming up on May the 1st. You can register through the Giants website, as always, but be sure to bring your own cleats and water. That was their only reminder. <laughs> Sticking with football, the GW Graham Junior Varsity football schedule has been released. Training camp starts August the 22nd with the first game at Vancouver College on September the 8th. Finally, YMCA Generation Health is a free 10-week healthy lifestyle program for children and their families, delivered through the YMCA of Greater Vancouver and in partnership with the Childhood Obesity Foundation. The Y Social Media has all the details, but on a very personal note, I actually volunteer at the YMCA. I'm a fitness instructor there. Um, so I, I know about the program and uh, Generation Health, first of all, is extremely cool. The instructors do a remarkable job making it accessible, engaging for the kids and for the parents. Um, I just think really highly of the instructors and the program itself. So if you or someone you know might be interested, definitely direct them to the Y social media. All the information is there. I think it'd be great to have a big class for the next cycle. All right, that's all we've got for sports today. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. After the break, we're going to have dawn with the weather and happy Easter, everyone. Hope you get to spend it with family. We'll see you after the long weekend. Chill TV weather, get out for that Easter long weekend walk. It is sunshine and the highs near 12. If you'd like to participate in reporting news in Chilliwack and you have a story you think we should know about, you can always send us a note to news at chilltv.ca and we'd love to hear from you. That's the news this week. Have a great Easter. I'm Don Lane.